we uh, construct that prototype with the iterative method, and uh, we change different parts depending of the results that we obtain. And finally, we got this um, this prototype. So um, about the instrumentation, we use for the position uh, uh, and color for the velocity uh, gyroscope. Uh, like uh, actuator, we use uh, dynamic servo motor dynamic cell. And uh, finally, we use uh, inclinometer with motion. Uh, about the dynamic model, we use uh, a structure like this. This is uh, similar to uh, one degree of freedom robot. If, uh, you can see that the dynamic model is so similar like a pendulum. And we use the structure and the diagram to guide to create the dynamic model, and it's like this. So for the physics parameters, here's the control strategy. Uh, the control strategy, firstly, and for the moment, is a PD plus control. Uh, and for the compensation part, uh, we use a 3D model that uh, I showed. With this model, uh, we we create uh, the physical variables like the gravity center, the inertial, and the mass of the uh, of the structure. And for the input of that control, we use a function that is so similar, like a movement uh, in degrees that generate the angle during the gate. Um, so uh, about the simulation results, uh, we could um, uh, you can see the that the error in slow frequencies is so small, and when you um, use an input uh, with high frequencies, uh, you can see uh, more. A great error. Um, this is with uh, input assigned input, and this is with the uh, uh, input of Fourier in the simulations. First, should be important to say that. Um, so, uh, but we can see that in the part of the slow frequencies, uh, we can see um, um, so small error. Um, for the prototype that we designed is um, is a, a correct. Okay, uh, with the conclusion uh, for this part, uh, for the PD plus that we use, uh, it's a effective control, but uh, we uh, want to create or develop uh, in a future a uh, more advanced or more different uh, strategy of control for the moment is a uh, PD plus. And so um, another thing that uh, I want to see is that the device is now in the level three of the technology maturity level. So it's just a prototype. And we're going to uh, develop uh, more uh, improved to the prototype and uh, we want to uh, show that prototype in the State Revolution Center in Mexico and Mexico City for use in patients, in real patients, because uh, for now uh, that project just use in my ALE, but we hope that we could drop in other in Real patients. Um, this is uh, my conclusion. Um, final of this the bibliography. Um, so um, thank you. And um, we want to parallel questions. Thank you very much for your presentation.
Um, Uriel, any questions? Oh, yeah. Yes? I'm confused. Uh, why do you use uh, exoskeleton um, instead of uh, orthosis? Ah, yeah, the orthosis is a fixed structure. Uh, the exoskeleton, no? Exoskeleton, no. The exoskeleton could move the the it have it could move the limb, for example. Uh, this is a mobile uh, structure, and the orthosis is a, a fixed structure. It's just. Um, Um, in this part, uh, we then have um, one example of a skeleton. Okay. Um, you you have only one lead for one lead or one foot or. Uh, left or right or both? Yes, and it's just for the left and okay. left foot. Yeah. Um, what product could use in the uh, in the left um, foot? Um, you could use holes in the right foot, but firstly we use the the right foot, just the right foot. But uh, picture, could... but in your design, I. There are uh, uh, some difference or not? Um, uh, this, this is one, the one uh, left foot. Mm -hmm. And you could use in, uh, the two foot. There are no problems with this because the structure is just a part of the, of the bottom. And you could use in whatever part. The same? Yeah, just the same. For the part of the structure that is just like the bottom of the foot is just the behind of the of the foot. Uh, I have the same question. What does it affect if you change it to the other? Oh. Did, did you test it in both? Because you mentioned that you tested only in the left of your foot, but did you test on the right? Yeah, uh, no, normally we use that prototype in the right foot. Is all the test uh, is used in the right foot, but the prototype uh, also be used in the um, in the left foot. Is is the same because the design uh, allow allow that. It's is your, it symmetric on side to left? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's symmetric. Um, because the, that part is just um, um, part that uh, put in the in behind and allow that you could um, use in the two put with any problem. And the weight. Um, the weight. How much does it weight? Wait. Ah, uh, it is. Mm, I don't have the important with the weight, but it's so uh, light. <laughs> there are no 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 problems with that. It's, it's so light, but I don't have the reality the the exact weight. Okay, and um, what are the limits for the size of the foot that can be used in only for adults? Can be used in children? Or are there any limits in which you have to change the design in the dimensions? It's fairly for adults. Yes, um, if you could use in uh, children, but uh, we need to design another uh, structure. It's just for adults. Uh, this part is flexible and you can use it in different um, sizes. Yeah. 
Uh, this theory uh, was designed for my foot, uh, by in my foot, but we hope that in future uh, designs, we could use different foods from different sites. Um, in this part, we could and uh, we can see that this velcro that you could um, use to put in different and uh, uh, different sizes of of links. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Any other question? Yeah. You said something about in the future you can you will play to coverage with the CERN Centro, yeah. okay, uh, for real patient. What is CERN? CERN is a center. What is the center of habitación in Mexico? CERN is. And where is the, the center? Um, <laughs> really, uh, is it is here in Mexico City? Um. We work with uh, with different uh, persons, and one of that person have uh, contact with this uh, with a doctor in this place. Uh, I really don't know how exactly in Mexico. Uh, you already been there? Uh, no, no, no. Because I know the Instituto Nacional de Rehabilitación. It's not the, the Instituto Nacional de Rehabilitación. No, no. no it's, it's, I I think that it's different. Yeah. It's public or private? It's public. It's public. Yeah. I don't remember that it's closed. Thank you. Okay. The second presentation. Uh, the title is Urological Condition Simulator for Android Workflow Maker Calibration and Testing. And presents uh, a. Oh, thank you. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm presenting my partner's work. This is about the neurological conditions and later for accurate urophometer calibration and testing. And let's start with a brief introduction. As an introduction, we have the urophometry is the first nine diagnostic technique that evaluates the human flow rate from the urethra. And due to its non-invasiveness, it is the predilected um, technique of the urologist. However, the there are some bad news. The only calibration method of this kind of devices is by pouring an exact volume of water at, at, exact, at, at a known and flow. So as you may see, this has uh, some deficiencies there. So the question, the research question was, was what if an neurological condition simulator is designed to accurate calibration and testing of the urophilometer? And because 
there are already commercial available devices that that actually simulate biosignals. For example, a cardiography simulator simulates the leads of 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 heartbeat. So, is there a chance to to design a urolated condition simulator in order to test the urophometers? The methodology we follow was at first we uh, with this pump, the diaphragm pump, with a minimal working voltage for volts, we perform a calibration, a calibration color flip. So the voltage varies from 4 volts to 10 volts in steps of half volt. And the flow rate measurements were performed 10 times each in order to obtain the calibration curve of the, of the pump. And these are the four conditions we selected in order to simulate them. There is a benign prostate obstruction over active and under active intrusion and the retinal structure. And why this, why are these conditions selected? Because of their particular flow rate curve, they have uh, some particular waveform. For example, overactive detrusor, the, the it's a single peak in the in all the voiding cycle. It's a similar peak. And, and for example, the electron structure is the same, is voiding with low amplitude on the, on the voiding cycle lasts. Mm -hmm. So, We we design a signal generator interface where you can select which your local condition is going to be performed. Um, so what I forgot to set is that these these conditions are really an, an array of elements of pulse width modulation. So in in the signal generator interface, we can select the the corresponding urological condition. And with this in mind, as we already know, we already know is um, the, the output of a microcontroller is around five to five, zero to five volts. And since the pump minimal operational uh, voltage is around four volts, we need to uh, perform an analog processing of the signal in order to Obtain the operational branch of the pump. Uh, we did this through uh, low pass second order different, uh, second order low pass filter, an application stage, and an offset correction stage. So these are the results of the of the simulator. Uh, we can observe in this uh, graph the calibration with two feeding models: the linear one and the quadratic one where the correlation Pearson factor, uh, our score is upper 99.99, which is uh, representative of our linear uh, behavior. So in this case, with this calibration and with the interface, as I already said, here we can select the array, the particular array of, of the of the urological condition. For example, in this case, we have the same condition, reactive detrusor. However, uh, for different age group, uh, here is four to seven years. In this case, it's up to 13 years. And apparently, we can see that this is higher. But if we observe and we check the y axis, the amplitude of this one it corresponds to even a greater uh, flow rate peak. And it's actually what? Yeah, it's expected to from the across the different populations in order of the gender and the age, age group. So uh, these are the voltage sequences that we obtain with the with the microcontroller. As I already said, this is an array of three thousand elements. Each element is displayed every hundred milliseconds. And we do the counts; it's around half minute, thirty seconds. To display each uh, each cycle, and this is already the results are reflected in a oscilloscope. For example, if we check the 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 the, 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 the 
of the signal we have obtained the ten seconds yeah, this way. This is expected. And for example, this is the part of an intrusor overactive, a group of men, age for 40 to 45 years old. And I know these are voltage sequences. These voltage sequences uh, in a further step are injected to the pump, and the pump is able to recreate the urological condition. Uh, it's the same with other with the other urological condition, for example, the benign prostate obstruction. And as conclusions, we have that uh, following this methodology, it is possible to develop a urological condition simulator for testing and validation of the urophometer. And the power work, of course, corresponds to expand these conditions to even more. Mm -hmm. And the impedance ensuring further applicability and reality is actually that's all. That we should follow in this kind of devices to find out about if there are any standards to follow. Are you referring to the, to the norms? Uh, standards? Yeah. Uh, I did not find any information about it. Uh, to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed about the way the photometers are calibrated. I mean, pouring water and uh, Pouring water up in my side bottle and, and I know float is so this <laughs> one is it. So I tried my best to find uh, any references in but I did not find. Ah, me and, and all the all the team. So I can say there's there's not there's not the best and, Okay, so um, in the information about how do they calibrate it is just like that. Yeah. It's just this water, an unknown volume of water, an unknown flow rate. And I mean, uh, they could use a pump, of course, but what I found did not say that. That's the other thing. And this equipment is certified, or is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The device. Yeah, the device. Yeah, which is Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. So, to our third and last presentation for this session. And the, the title is Prototype, Prototype of UFE Flexible Intensity for training based on the task of the Society of American Gastrointestinal and Endoscopy Surgeons Tasks, Simulation and Design, and is presented by yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to wait a few minutes for uh, to solve a technical problem. <laughs> Okay, so we have been talking with So, even if I'm Adriana and I'm going to explain my, my work uh, about prototype of USD flexible endoscope for training based on the task of surgery of American gastrointestinal endoscopy surgeons task, simulation and design. Uh, in this slide, uh, we watch the, the concept. Well, what is an endoscopy? Endoscopy is a VR procedure to 
diagnostic uh, gastrointestinal problems uh, like cancers, ulcer, and use a flexible endoscope with a camera to examine the digestive tract. Why are endoscopies done? Endoscopies are performed to examine the inside of the body. Uh, the endoscopy um, uh, tell of the well, uh, used uh, for diagnose um, to treatment or monitoring the internal organ organs and to the digestive tract. Uh, uh, this is my objective. Uh, the first is design and um, manufacture the handle and lens, develop a graphical interface for acquiring the position signal, process the position data, select components for the implementation of the knowledge skills prototype, and evaluate road trajectory. Well, uh, why do we use an endoscopy simulator? Uh, we use a simulator, a uh, uh, endoscopy simulator to train, training the endoscopies, uh, allow practitioners to gain hands on experience in control environment uh, for realistic scenarios. Uh, we create an analysis skills uh, and, in, and implement the status metrics like the production, um, mucosal evaluation, targeting, and and the trajectory. Um, and and other skills um, have key features and components. The first is uh, articulate deep design. Uh, in in and other skills uh, have the articulate uh, uh, two degrees for freedom. In movement control, the handle control tips orientation, uh, we adjusting for uh, to to cable and the control interface, uh, the control interface and track the user's profile and uh, implement the uh, data with a novice, intermediate or expert endoscopy and um, implement the science metric. Uh, to train another set of copy skills and the group design. Um, we based on a no link to endoscope to make the, the group. Uh, the methodology is uh, was the first step in mechanical design. Uh, we use a uh, solid work to, um, to design the, the handle. Uh -huh. Uh, the second step is hardware component, a uh, flexible endoscope, and we we use um we use uh, the flexible endoscope to make the, the procedure. Um, uh, the second is NPU sensor, Arduino board, and camera to feedback. The third step is uh, software development. And we use the Python, MATLAB, and control interface. The four is metrics and standard. Uh, the standard is retroflexion, mucosal evaluation, navigation and loop production, and target identification and extraction. I have what the simulator tested. Uh, the first step to test the simulator is and that probably of motion tracking um, is to use the MPU sensor for recollecting the data. Uh, the second is repeatability of simulations. Uh, we repeat, um, repeat the same procedure. The third is comparison with real life performance. Uh, the fourth is user experience uh, feedback, uh, use the interface. And the fifth is error handling and correction uh, in the um, in the interface. Uh, we watch the error to the endoscopy. Uh, 
And the sixth uh, key and the sixth is the test is a uh, real time feedback and data recording. Um, well, well uh, in this slide, we watch the interface. Um, we have the, the two buttons to start and to end. Uh, we have the resolution from the camera. Um, and we have the bottom uh, with the road trajectory. In this bottom, um, uh, we watch the trajectory from the MPU. Uh, we have the type and um, and take the data. Uh, in this slide, uh, we watch the flexible window scope. Uh, in this image, uh, we can see the retroflexion task. Um, and the, well, well, um, PLA is better sweet than the thin. Well, I, the material uh, we can use to the, make the handle. Uh, it's PLA, Anna. Uh, it's better than the same for a flexible endoscope. Um, the young small is 2.7 uh, uh, gigapascal, offering a better balance, balance of rigidity and flexible compared to the resin. Uh, in this slide, uh, we observe the the rules trajectory from the MPU. MPU. Um, in this um, image, uh, I prove the filter comment to eliminate the, the interference uh, and the error percentage to three dimensional in X, Y, and Z position. In X axis is the zero point. Point, um, 50 and y axis is 0 0.90 and in z axis 1.15 and the execution time to use a uh, MATLAB is better than Python because in MATLAB um, the execution time is the to five time five minutes to Python and the future time is the uh, change the diameter to the, the the camera and the cable uh, and the movement of control with loop is easy to understand but requires training for navigation and the conclusion is the the develop and technical and the lab skills Simulators uh, from Mission Rebel in achieving the primary objectives and implement the science metrics to the um, to, to practice the endoscopies. And um, this is my preference. Uh, <laughs> And then I'll have the questions, please. I have a question. Yeah. Question 2% uh, the slide will be quite more in the space, please. Uh, you have something at the right side that says time. What is the time for and what are the units? Uh, okay. Uh, Sandit uh, mentioned the uh, well, it's uh, five minutes to uh, make the practice. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, it's five minutes. So uh, that is meant to be in minutes? Yes, minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be um, advancing in the uh, in time as you start, uh -huh. and it's going to be zero, and it's going to be counting the yes. time for you to finish in five minutes. Mm -hmm. And 
you mentioned the comparison between two materials yes. for the uh, first resin and the um, Why not other material and only the comparison between? Only to PLA and resin. Uh -huh. You didn't try any other material. I mean, what you said that the PLA is better than resin. But is there any other material possible? Mm, I guess yes, but I'm not. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, what is the other material to work uh, to make this? Uh, um, Test that with how many people or in which stage are you with these advantages? Um, test with uh, my laboratory partners. Um, when non specialists have tried it, no, yes, uh, future plans. I forget it. Uh, if we if we're going to hospital to make taste, uh, for endonavistin. Because in my, um, but it's very interesting if a specialist that already has used real endoscopes try it to say how good it is for training. Mm -hmm. the, for the training. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, while we finish uh, our session, uh, I hope you can join us in bio session number three, which is going to be at 15.30. Thank you very much for being here.